Uh, maybe we, can we turn that light on also? Inside your blue book, it's this blue book, you will find on the pink tab, second to the last, if you open there, you'll find a copy of the Sri Ishopanishad. And these verses solve all the problems of life and set one on the path back home, back to the spiritual world. And so first we'll hear the, the Sanskrit verses, which we can chant in unison. And then after that we'll go back and we'll sing the, the, the English translations. So, does everyone have the page? Is everyone comfortable? Hare Krishna. Om Purnam Madak Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Utachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishishate Isavasyam Midam Sarvam Yatkincha Jagatyam Jagat Tena tyak tena punjita magrida kasisuddhanam kurvan neveha karmani jijivi shekshatam samaha evam twai nanyate tosti na karma lipite nare asurya namate loka ande na tamasavritaha tamste pratyavigachanti heke chatma hano janaha Ane jade kamana so javio, naina deva abnu van purvana shat, tadhavato nyana te titishtat, tasmina poma tadishva dadati, tadejati tanajati, tadure tadvantike, tarantarasya sarvasya, tadu sarvasya sebhayataha. Yes to Sarvani Bhutani Atmani Vanu Pashati Sarva Pute Shuchatmanam Tatona Vichagupsate Yasmin Sarvani Bhutani Atmai Vad Budvijanataha Tatra Komahokashoka Ekadvam Manu Pashataha Saparya Jakshu Kramakaya Mavranam Asnavidam shudham apapa vidham Kavir manishi paribhu swayambur Yadhatyatya thortan vyarada shasvati bhya samabhyaha Andhantama pravishanti ye vidyam upasate Tato puya ivate tamo ya uvidyayam rataha Anyareva hur vidyaya anyadahura vidyaya Iti shushru madhiranam yenas tad vijichakshire vidyam cha vidyam cha yas tad bedo bayam saha avidyayam ratum tirtva vidyayam ratum ashnute andantama pravishanti ye sambuti mupasate tato puya ivate tamo ya uvidyam rataha Anyareva hura sambhavad, anyarahura sambhavad, iti shushu matiranam yenas tad vichichakshire, sambhutim cha vinasham cha yas tad vedo bayam saha, 
vinashenam ritum dhirtva sambutyam ritum ashnute hiran mayena patrena satyasa pihitam mukham tatvam pushan pavrinu satya dharmai adrishtaye pushan ne karshe yama surya prajapatya vyuharasmin samuha tejo yate rupam kalyanatamam tate pashami o sava saurusha somasmi vayur anilam amritam atedam bashmantam shariram om krato smara kritam smara krato smara kritam smara agni naya supataraya asman vishvani deva vainani vidvan yu yodyasmas juharanameno Vishtam te namuktim videma. Shishapanishad Sampuranam Hari Om. And now the translations we can read together. The personality of God is perfect and complete, and because He is completely perfect, all emanations from Him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself. Because he is the complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. Everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota, and one should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in that way, for that sort of work will not bind him to the law of karma. There is no alternative to this way for man. The killer of the soul, whoever he may be, must enter into the planets known as the worlds of the faithless, full of darkness and ignorance. Although fixed in his abode, the personality of God it is swifter than the mind and can overcome all of this running. The powerful demigods cannot approach him. Although in one place he controls those who supply the air and rain, he surpasses all in excellence. The Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away, but he is very near as well. He is within everything, and yet he is outside of everything. He who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord, who sees all living entities as his parts and parcels, and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anything or any being. One who always sees all living entities as spiritual sparks in quality one with the Lord, becomes a true knower of things, what then can be illusion or anxiety for him? Such a person must factually know the greatest of all, the personality of Godhead, who is unembodied, omniscient, beyond reproach, without veins, pure and uncontaminated, the self-sufficient philosopher who has been fulfilling everyone's desires since time immemorial. Those who engage in the culture of nascent activities shall enter into the darkest region of ignorance. Worse still are those engaged in the culture of so-called knowledge. The wise have explained that one result is derived from the culture of knowledge and that a different result is obtained from the culture of nations. Only one who can learn the process of nations and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. Those who are engaged in the worship of demigods enter into the darkest region of ignorance and still more so to the worshipers of the impersonal absolute. It is said that one result is obtained by worshiping the supreme cause of all causes, and that another result is obtained by worshiping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the undisturbed authorities who clearly explained it. One should know perfectly the personality of God in Sri Krishna and his transcendental name, form, qualities, and pastimes, as well as the temporary material creation with its temporary demigods, men, and animals. When one knows these, he surpasses death and the ephemeral cosmic manifestation with it. And in the eternal kingdom of God, he enjoys his eternal life of bliss and knowledge. O oh, my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. O oh, my Lord, O oh, primeval philosopher, maintainer of the universe, O oh, regulating principle, destination of the pure devotees, well-wisher to the progenitors of mankind, please remove the effulgence of your transcendental rays so that I can see your form of bliss. You are the eternal supreme personality of Godhead, like unto the sun, as am I. 
Let this temporary body be burnt to ashes, and let the air of life be merged with the totality of air. Now, O oh my Lord, please remember all my sacrifices, and because you are the ultimate beneficiary, please remember all that I have done for you. O oh my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances falling on the ground at your feet. O oh my Lord, please lead me on the right path to reach you, and since you know all I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins, so there will be no hindrance to my progress. Hare Krishna, welcome everybody. Hare Krishna. I'm going to read to you from the invocation. Okay. This is on page 13 of the book that says Sri Upanishad on it. And the translation, again, the personality of God, it is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself. Because he is the complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The complete whole or the supreme absolute truth is the complete personality of Godhead. Realization of impersonal Brahman or of Paramatma, the super soul, is not, excuse me, is incomplete realization of the absolute complete. The supreme personality of Godhead is Sakchit Ananda Vigraha. Realization of impersonal Brahman is realization of his sat feature or his aspect of eternity. And Paramatma realization is realization of his sat and chit features his aspects of eternity and knowledge. But realization of the personality of God it is realization of all the transcendental features, sat, chit, and ananda, bliss. When one realizes the Supreme Person, he realizes these aspects of the Absolute Truth and their completeness. Vigraha means form. Thus the complete whole is not formless. If he were formless, or if he were less than his creation in any other way, he could not be complete. The complete whole must contain everything both within and beyond our experience, otherwise he cannot be complete. The complete whole, the personality of Godhead, has immense potencies, all of which are as complete as he is. Thus this phenomenal world is also complete in itself. The 24 elements of which this material universe is a temporary manifestation are arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance and substance of the universe. No other unit in the universe need make any extraneous effort to try to maintain the universe. The universe functions on its own time scale, which is fixed by the energy of the complete whole. And when that schedule is completed, this temporary manifestation will be annihilated by the complete arrangement of the complete whole. All facilities are given to the small complete units, namely the living beings, to enable them to realize the complete whole. All forms of incompleteness are experienced due to incomplete knowledge of the complete whole. The human form of life is a complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living being and it is obtained after evolving through 8,400,000 species of life in the cycle of birth and death. If in this human life of full consciousness the living entity does not realize his completeness in, realis in relation to the complete whole, he loses the chance to realize his completeness and is again put into the evolutionary cycle by the law of material nature. Because we do not know that there is a complete arrangement in nature for our maintenance, we make efforts to utilize the resources of nature to create a so-called complete light of life of sense enjoyment. Because the living entity cannot enjoy the life of the senses without being dovetailed with a complete whole, the misleading life of sense enjoyment is illusion. The hand of a body is a complete unit, only as long as it is attached to the complete body. When the hand is severed from the body, it may appear like a hand, but it actually has none of the potencies of a hand. Similarly, living beings are part and parcel of the complete whole, and if they are severed from the complete whole, the illusory representation of completeness cannot fully satisfy them. The completeness of human life can be realized only when one engages in the service of the complete whole. All services in this world whether social, political, communal, international, or even interplanetary, will remain incomplete until they are dovetailed with the complete whole. 
When everything is dovetailed with the complete whole, the attached parts and parcels also become complete in themselves. So yoga means to reconnect with the complete whole, and to the degree that we're able to connect with the complete whole, the, the yoga process is successful. And therefore, in the beginning of the paragraph of the purport, Srila Prabhupada mentions that there are various aspects of the Supreme Whole that one realizes by performing various kinds of yoga. Vedanti tat tat favidas tatvam yajjnanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti shabdite. The supreme absolute truth is realized in three features: Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna says, "Brahmano hi pratishtaham amritasya vitascha, shashvatasya chadharmasya sukasya kanti kascha." That the I'm the source of the impersonal Brahman. That what is uh, desirable for those who have no knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his personal feature and um, who aspire to merge into the, the absolute light of the Lord or are satisfied with the impersonal realization, all that is an emanation from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, we find in this Sri Shapanishad a distinctive um, description of the personality of, of Godhead. In the 15th mantra, Hiran Mayena Patrena Satyasya Pitam Mukam Tatvam Pushana Paravrenu Satyatarma Idrishte Hiran Mayena means this effulgence, the impersonal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hiran Mayena Patrena Satyasya Pitam Mukam Behind that is the face, otherwise known as the mukha. So the, this face is being described that beyond, beyond this effulgence, there is a personality. And Krishna confirms that in the Bhagavad Gita, as I quoted. And the person, the one who comes to know the source of the Brahman and the Paramatma and takes to the process of sakshad bhakti, direct uh, service to the personality of Godhead, can come to know him. Um, Krishna says, Bhaktiham, um, Bhaktiamam abhijananti yavanyas chasmi tattvataha, that someone can know me only if they engage in bhakti, in this process of uh, worshiping Krishna uh, out of love, following in the footsteps of the um, eternal residence of the spiritual world. This is the process, ultimately, to follow in the footsteps of those who have spontaneous love for Krishna. When one performs this kind of bhakti, following in the footsteps of those who have spontaneous love for Krishna, then one can attain perfection by their mercy. However, in the beginning, that spontaneous devotion may not be forthcoming because I'm contaminated by the modes of material nature and I'm conditioned by them. And therefore, there's a purification process. Sarvopadi vinir muktam, sarvopadi vinir muktam, tatprat vena nirvalam, rishi kena rishi kesha, sevanam bhakti ruchate. This uh, process of bhakti requires purification. And first of all, I become free from the bodily conception of life. These um, designations are called upadis, upadis. It means that um, there are many cars in the world. And there are many cars in the parking lot outside right now. And they are just cars. But one of those cars is my car. And that makes a big difference because I've designated that that's my car. And if uh, someone scratches it or steals it, then it's a problem for me because that's my car. Uh, there are cars being scratched right at this very minute all over San Jose and probably stolen also. And it's not a concern to me at all right now. <laughs> Probably because I don't know about it. And uh, even if I did, it wouldn't concern me because they're not my car. So uh, coming into the world as a uh, spiritual soul, but being tethered to the um, material conception of life through the false ego. I do have an ego. Ego means to understand that I am something. I exist. And I have a, a, an eternal occupation. But when that becomes false ego, 
I become connected to the designations that I'm this body and I'm born into a particular family and a particular nation and then I say that's who I am and that's false ego because I'm not that thing. I'm, that's temporary designation. So through the process of bhakti, sarvupati vinirmuktam, I become purified, tat paratvena nirmalam, I become, all my senses become pure by performance of bhakti and in the beginning it's not spontaneous, it's done in the manner of rules and regulations. This is called vaiti bhakti or sadhana bhakti. And that sadhana bhakti is meant to awaken the spontaneous uh, kind of bhakti that's naturally there within the heart. Nitya siddha krishna prema sadhya kabunoi shravanadi shuddha chite kare udoi. This Chaitanya Charitamrita says that naturally the, uh, that spontaneous love for Krishna uh, is there within the heart. It's the nature of the soul. But um, now it's covered and it needs to be uncovered. And how? By the process of shravana adi. That means hearing and chanting and the other processes of, of sakshad bhakti, of direct devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God. Hearing, chanting, remembering, praying, worshiping the lotus feet, um, and so on. These uh, nine processes of, of uh, d devotional service are engaged in, in the beginning under the direct direction of the scripture and the spiritual master who say the same thing. The spiritual master quotes Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and the Srimad Bhagavatam and the uh, Bhagavad Gita speak for themselves, but they can't correct you. Um, they're passive. Whereas if you have a spiritual master, then the spiritual master will correct you. And that's active agent. And by under the strict regulations of the spiritual master and the scripture, one follows the process of uh, Vaidhi Bhakti and, and uh, performs sadhana bhakti, practice. And gradually by that, uh, practice in association with devotees and the continuance of the nine processes of devotional service there awakens a spontaneous kind of devotional service that's naturally there within the heart and then one begins to cultivate that and there are um, progressive stages in bhakti which come to the point of reestablishing one's relationship with the supreme personality of Godhead beyond Brahman or Paramatma one can see the Supreme Lord face to face, shake hands with the Lord, just as Brahmaji did, or Krishna shook hands with him. Uh, after he gave him instructions for how to create the universe, he shook his hands and said, good luck, Brahma. <laughs> just like a friend, good luck to you. And um, Arjuna was on the same chariot with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Pandavas were so fortunate that Krishna came to live in their house. And he acted as their messenger, he was their well-wisher. He gave them uh, instructions how to avoid disaster and so forth. And um, then, of course, he uh, took the side of the, the Pandavas in the Great War. And this is because of their natural love for him. He's attracted to the devotees who have natural love for him. So um, Krishna can, ap can appear anywhere that he likes because he's this, the complete whole. And the only incompleteness I feel is due to incomplete knowledge of the complete whole. So the process of bhakti is meant to awaken that complete knowledge of the complete whole, which is not just book knowledge, but it happens through the process of, of service. Atashri Krishna Namadi Nabaved Grayam Indriye Sevan Mukihi Jivado Swayameva Spuratyada one cannot see the Supreme Personality of God with the blunt material senses. However, if one engages in seva, in service to the Supreme, beginning with the tongue, then Krishna will reveal himself to such a servitor. And this is the mood of bhakti. Jnane prayasa mudapasya namante eva jivanti san mukharitam bhavadiya vartam. One gives up the speculative process or, or trying to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead through one's own intelligence and submissively hears about Krishna and f from Krishna and from Krishna's representatives and from that process gradually stanestita shudikatam tanuvan manobir 
staying in whatever position one's in now and, and submissively hearing, prayaso jita jito pyasi taistrilokyam. Krishna becomes uh, captured, conquered, actually. He is ajita, but he becomes conquered by the, the living entity who uh, engages in this process and comes to know him through uh, his mercy. So this uh, first, in, the invocation verse is an answer to all of those who speculate to try to understand God, who say there is no God. Uh, the Sri Upanishad, which is a shruti, evidence from beyond our experience, this is axiomatic truth from the Vedas, uh, states that there is a um, source to everything, and that source is complete in, it, in himself, and everything that emanates from him is also complete in itself, and that, um, as Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport, the goal of life is to understand him. And all facility is given to, given to the living entity for that purpose. We can understand the, the, the supreme absolute whole, the complete whole, by his mercy. And that's the facility that we're given when we're born into the human form of life. An ant crawling across a priceless ruby cannot understand that it's a priceless ruby and uh, because he doesn't have the intelligence he's got something else on his mind and that is sugar <laughs> <laughs> so those who are those who are distracted by the senses even in the human form of life and um, having come to this point of inquiry asking about the supreme absolute truth um, may see so many things as valuable in this world However, one who uh, has been become um, disgusted with the world or disenchanted with this world and has decided, I want to find the greatest thing, is given full facility because of the power of the, the supreme absolute whole who, who provides that facility. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam briti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayanti te. Krishna says to those who worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Tesham ivan kam partam aham jnana jantam aha nashayam yat mabhavasto jnana dipena bhashvata. I dwelling in their hearts, Krishna says, dispel with the shining lamp of knowledge their darkness which is born of ignorance. And when that darkness is dispelled, then one can see oneself and one can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead and then all forms of um, dissatisfaction are uh, removed and one can reawaken one's relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Om Tat Sat, Hare Krishna. Any um, comment or question? Yes. That 15, uh, page 15, the first uh, um, paragraph at the end, it is explaining that he who lost the chance to realize his completeness and is again put into the evolutionary cycle by the law of material nature. So it's saying if we don't realize the completeness, then you will be come back again and again and again in here until you recognize that? Yes. Um, material nature is mechanical. Prakrite kriyamanani, prakrite kriyamanani, gune karmani sarvasha, hankara vimudhatma, kartaham iti manyate. It's running as uh, in a very uniform way, the material nature. And there's a law of action and reaction, karmic reactions. And on a subtle level, whatever my psychic movements are will determine uh, where I end up in that material nature by the force of varied consciousness. Varied consciousness. The consciousness can vary according to its association. Purusha prakriti stohi punkte prakriti jan gunan karanam gunasangosya sarasad yoni janmasu. Krishna says you end up in good, bad, and all kinds of other places because of your association, your sangha with the 
uh, three gunas, the three modes of material nature. As you associate uh, that, you will become, you'll take on that nature. Because the soul is tiny and is called tatasta energy. Um, the Supreme Absolute Whole has various energies. Parasha Shakti Vividaya Vishuddhe Subhavika Jnana Balakriyacha. The ver varieties of energies, and the Vishnu Purana describes Vishnu Shakti Para Prokta Shetra Gyakya Tata Para Avidya Karma Sam Gyanya Tritiya Shakti Rishite. They're uh, generally divided into three categories. One is that the, um, the Vishnu Tattva, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then there's the, the living entity who is um, like the Supreme Lord in quality, but in quantity is very tiny. And therefore he's subject to um, become bewildered by the material nature. He can go either, he can stay either under the protection of spiritual nature or the material nature. And avidya karma sam gyan gya, he is... Uh, when he's seen to be engaged in fruitive activities, he's known to be conditioned and controlled by the material nature. So, um, did we get too far afield of your question, which was? So, if you don't take advantage. So, if you don't take advantage, it means, as um, Lord Rishabhadeva says, karmatmaka yena sharira bandaha. When your consciousness is covered, it's, he calls it karmatmika, it's colored, colored, tinged by the... Originally, imagine, you know, very pure water. If you take one little drop of, of food coloring and you put it in there, and then it'll be pink. And <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it practically unless you filter it again and you get the clean water. So the consciousness is pure but it becomes tinge, karmatmaka yena sharira bandaha. And because of that tinge, uh, I'm, I become attracted by the force of nature into various uh, other species of life. However, uh, yeah, so this is a danger. The danger is obtaining the rare human form and then not using it properly. In fact, that's addressed in here. Asurya nama te loka antena tamasavrita tamste pratya bhikachchanti yekichat mahano janaha. Very strong language used here that if you don't take advantage of the opportunity in the human form of life, then the, the uh, shruti is calling you atmaha. You're an atma, you're a soul, and you're killing yourself. You're killing the soul. Many people say, read that and they say, how's that possible? We just read in the Bhagavad Gita, the soul can't be killed. The jayate mriyate vakada chin. It says the soul's never killed. But practically it's killed because having been given this opportunity to, to f utilize the human form of life and then not doing it and falling back down again into the cycle of, of uh, lower species. And who knows how long you can be there. For billions of births you can be there then it's the greatest calamity and it's considered like killing your soul. But, Krishna says, Neha bikramana shosti pratyavayo navidyate svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat That if you take, a, if you advance a little bit in devotional service, even su alpam means tiny, tiny bit, a little bit of start, a little start on the path, will save you from the mo this most dangerous type of fear, which is misusing the human form and falling back down and not being able to take advantage of it. In that case, uh, when someone begins the process of devotional service, then even if he gives it up and has no interest in it, by force he'll be pulled back in. Krishna will remind him in his next life, and he'll come back in contact with devotional service, and uh, he'll be able to take it up where he left it off. There's a sort of a... Uh, uh, you know, a, a pull that is once somebody starts the process that keeps them pulling them forward. So, yes, it's possible to misuse the human form of life and, f and uh, glide down into lower species. So one is recommended to f fully utilize every minute of the human form of life. There's no other purpose to it Kamasya nendriya pritir labo jive te yavata jivasya tatva jignasya narto yash cheha karma bihi 
There's no other purpose for this body and its senses other than inquiring about what's the highest thing. And it's okay, it's allowed by Shastra to utilize your senses to maintain yourself because you, you need some maintenance. Therefore, it says, Kama Senendriya It means that the senses should be used for self preservation. And that means uh, eat to live, don't live to eat. In New Orleans, they, they're very proud. They say they have all these restaurants and they say, our motto is, other, other places they say, uh, eat to live, and we say, live to eat. <laughs> but the Shastra doesn't say that. Shastra says, just maintain yourself. Whatever you have to do to maintain yourself, everyone has a different level of maintenance. An elephant's quota for maintenance is different than a squirrel. A squirrel needs a persimmon, and he's happy for the day. That's all he needs. <laughs> And, and an elephant needs a whole tree, <laughs> and then he'll be satisfied. And human beings have different uh, quotas also. But we should um, take whatever is our quota, according to the Sri Shapanishad, isava samidam sarvam yat kincha jagat yam jagat tena tyak tena bunjita. There's been something set aside for us. It's not that we have to worry about it either. This is another uh, kind of uh, illusion that I think that I... I have to, um, of course, you have to put a little effort into it. Even if you just have a field, you have to go out and put the seeds in the ground. And, um, but Krishna is uh, providing for everyone. Prabhupada noted that when he went to America, he didn't have any money, he didn't have any connections, but he said, uh, I've been maintained. I've been maintained. I ate everywhere, I, you know, I was taken care of. There's an arrangement everywhere that you go to to, um, to be maintained, so we don't have to we don't have to concentrate so much on economic development, just enough to maintain, and the balance of time should be used for inquiry. And such a life dedicated to that will be uh, fruitful, and one can advance. Yeah. Regarding this verse, uh, which says, uh, if someone makes a little progress in the path of a devotional service, he is saved from the greatest danger of uh, uh, material existence. And there is another verse which says, uh, a Prabhupada quote says many times that uh, whatever progress we make in the devotion service is never lost. It's always there. So when we combine these two verses, uh, can we interpret to mean that once we make some progress in the devotional service, we pretty much do not fall down into the animal kingdom again. Although it may happen once in a while temporarily, like Bharat Maharaj. Uh, oh, it, hap it can happen. But uh, if, um, yeah, generally it means that you, you'll maintain a, um, a body in which you can inquire about the so you can continue the process. And even those cases that you mentioned, there's Bharat Maharaj who became a deer, Gajendra became an elephant. Um, you know, these cases are given to show that even if one comes into such an adverse situation, uh, Krishna will help and remind us how to take up the process of devotional service again, even from that position. So when you say then uh, uh, we are saved uh, from the greatest danger, it's pretty much for the rest of the existence that we are saved from the greatest danger. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Oh, is that us? You want to check? Do you know what kind of car it is? By okay. Here you go. So, uh, oh, any other points? Yes. Hare Krishna. So continuing the same point, like uh, the tiny amount of progress, is there some... When you use a microphone, hold it like right, right like this. It's on. Is there a specific... Um, how do we uh, determine what amount of devotional service or... Is what? 
is it a is there some kind of a threshold after which you are saved or yes su alpam su alpam means tiny tiny bit any any start it's, it's this is what the verse means that any little start in devotional service uh begins the process we call this the penny principle and uh one of our devotees kumar was going door to door and he asked the the person he gave a Gita and he said, give a donation. And they said, uh, I don't have anything. And he said, well, just give something because he wanted to help him get us started. And he said, I don't have anything. He said, just give a penny. And he said, penny? All right, a penny for this book? Okay. And he goes to the back of his apartment. And he's digging through the drawer and his wife comes out and says that. What are you looking for? He said, a penny. He said, why a penny? He said, this guy at the front showing this book and he asked for a donation, and I said, he said, give me a penny, I'm going to give him a penny for the book. And she said, you are not. That's a beautiful book. And she uh, took him out front and made him give $51. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. So that happens with Krishna also. You know, as Prabhupada said, you take one step towards Krishna, he takes ten, ten steps towards you. Krishna always expands in your life. Um, you know, Brahma was sitting, wondering how to take care of all the demons in the universe, and Lord Varaha came out of his nostril, and flying through the air, and then he expanded into a gigantic form. And Matsya started as a little minnow in the water. King Satyavrata saw him there, and the minnow said, please save me from, this, from the bigger aquatics in this body of water, and you have to protect me, you're the king. So he took him home and then he grew every day until he became five million yojanas. So Krishna grows in our life. Even someone starts a little something, they don't know that they did it. It's called a gyata sukriti. They unknowingly perform some kind of devotional service, but it's Krishna. And Krishna's, a little bit of Krishna goes a long way. Krishna, Krishna once we start, just say Hare Krishna, anything like that then the process has begun. And so, yeah, su alpam, tiny bit, anything. Anything can begin the process. Yeah. Another question? Did you tune this? Sort of. Do we have a Rooney? She's somewhere. Okay. So, a seating arrangement. As more devotees come, we'll have to, we'll have to arrange seats. So, someone who's brilliant at arranging seats and uh, also, you know, defragging computers and figuring out <laughs> algorithms and stuff. Maybe you can figure out the best seating for everybody. That'd be all right. Huh? Get one mat. Bigger mats. How will, is this an algorithm? Yeah. If you get bigger, one big mat. Yeah. Instead of a, a small mats. Yeah. Okay. Or how about one big temple? I'll sing you play. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Can I just have a G, a Rooney? A G? Maybe just turn off a couple lights. How many cartolas do we have? Certified. There, there's one, two. Can you turn that light too? Oh. Now we can't see. Well, they can hear. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama.
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Rama, Hare Rama, Nama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Oh! 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Go Premanande, Itai Gauda Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Gauda Hari Bol. Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Can we have these lights back on, please? Oh, my Gyana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Militam Dena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. We're now looking at the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which this month is the featured chapter for CHAD members all over the world. CHAD is an international organization which is sweeping the world. It stands for Chapter a Day. There are people um, in houses, and apartments, in tents, in caves, in parks, all over the world who have uh, taken a, a personal vow, a voluntary vow, to chant at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. That means that they either read the whole English translate every English translation in at least one chapter or they do at least the Sanskrit or they do both but they don't let a day go by without saying one chapter of the Bhagavad Gita it's Chad members are everywhere now and this month Chad members are um, repeating the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita so I thought it would be nice to look at a few of the verses and purports and um, page uh, 570 you'll see text 6 and 7 and Krishna says maha bhutan yahankaro bhutir avyakta evacha avyakta mevacha indriyani daishaikam cha pancha chendriya gocharaha itcha dvesha sukham dukham sangatas chetana dritihi etat chetram samasena Savikaram udaritam. And the translation is the five great elements false ego, intelligence, the unmanifested, the ten senses of the mind, the five sense objects desire, hatred, happiness, distress, the aggregate, the life symptoms, and convictions. All these are considered in summary to be the field of activities and its interactions. So in this chapter, Krishna is describing that there is a field and a knower of the field and the field is the body and the knower of the field is the is the soul and then there's a super knower who knows all bodies not just this single body and that's the super soul or Krishna who is the best friend of the living entity and follows him everywhere Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hride Shara Junati Stiti Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rujani Mayaya Krishna describes in the 18th chapter of the Gita that the the body is a yantra it's a machine and someone sent me a picture of a human eye and it's so close up I think Mother Bhumi included this in on, on a Facebook uh, page a, a, a photograph of a human eye that's so close you can't even tell at first that it's an eye but if you look carefully you can see this the very structure that we take for granted when someone writes a poem or a, you know a song says oh 
he had beautiful eyes or she had, you know, the most enchanting eyes. But if you look a little closer, <laughs> you'll see it's a camera, camera lens and you won't be so romantic about it. And if you get closer and closer, you look and you just see, you know, it's a lens. And when I was looking in that picture today, very carefully, I, uh, I began thinking, you know, who's looking out of that hole? There's a hole right in the middle and there's a, there's a structure. It's like a camera lens. It opens and it closes according to the, the light of the, of the aperture. Correct. Thank you. And uh, lets in enough light so you can see who's you. You're the Shetragya. You're the one who knows the body. Somebody's seeing and as soon as that seer leaves the body, that eye has no more use. You burn it. You throw it away. It's, it's, it's a useless thing. It's a machine. But the, the soul is non-mechanical, spiritual. And Krishna talks about this in the Gita. A similar verse in the seventh chapter where he, he enumerates the material elements. Bhumirapo analovayu kammano bhudirevacha ahankara itiyame binna prakriti rashtada. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. These eight comprise my separated material energy. And if you just walk around and look at the world and see that these energies are present in various combinations, you're engaging in this kind of sankhya, which means to deconstruct the, the world and look and see the difference between the elements and then to find out what is the, the soul behind the ele elements. Uh, the soul is, is mixed in. It's mixed in with these material elements. And Krishna then says, I'm quoting again from the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Aparayamitastvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhutam mahabaho yayedam daryate jagat. Besides the inferior energy, there is a superior energy, and that's the soul. That's the shetragya. That's this, the, the living entity who can become conscious of the body and, and other things. And... Uh, Who's, who lives within the body, the Shetragya. So this verse, uh, Krishna is also giving an account of all